Hi, it's Captain Lisa from Sail Time San Francisco. Today we're going to talk about your charging system, your shore power cord, your voltage for your starting battery and your house battery bank, and how to make sure that everything's working perfectly. On the Beneteau 38, we have an electric panel here and there's a line right um, uh, vertically on it. So everything to the left of that goes over shore power. So we have your battery charger, which is on. We have a water heater, which we don't need to turn on unless we're using it, followed by the AC outlets. And the AC outlets we leave on so people can charge phones or flashlights or VHFs while you're at the dock. And the most important button that we want you to visually look at every time you leave the boat is to make sure the AC power, alternating current or shore power is plugged in and registering. That's the most important thing we want you to look at when you leave the sail time boat. If after plugging your boat in, you see the reverse polarity light on, that's indicating there's a, a problem with the way the dock is wired or the way the shore power is plugged in. So check both ends of the shore power cord on the dock and on the boat, and this should disappear because at our marinas in San Francisco Bay, we have great um, code and they're all run correctly. The only reason this might happen is if you were at a backyard dock or in a um, country that didn't have good wiring, but other than that, it will probably be your cords not plugged in correctly. You can check your voltage here using the volts button. This is for your main house bank at 13.5. And next is gonna be for your engine at 13.6. We're at the dock and these are fully charged. You must make sure that your batteries are always charged if you're gonna be offshore power for any additional length of time, it's a good idea to cycle through the refrigerator or some heavy, other heavy draw um, items on your boat and make sure that you keep your batteries topped off and charged. When unplugging the shore power cord, you wanna switch the 30 amp breaker off and leave the 50 amp breaker installed all the time. You can leave the cord installed, and then next we're gonna go and plug it from the boat. When you're ready to unplug the shore power cord, make sure it's the battery charger is turned off down below, and make sure the uh, 30 amp breaker is turned off at the dock. We put these handy dandy pieces of red tape on there so that you know to rotate the cord, and then grip the edges of it and pull it out from the boat and close the cover and replace. So after you're done taking the shore power cord off the boat, step off the boat. Don't throw the shore power cord onto the dock. Coil it and place it under the dock steps. The reason we do that is because this way no one can kick the shore power cord accidentally into the water and um, nobody, if it rains or something like that, it's secure and left under the dock steps. Make sure that your battery charger is on, make sure the AC power is on and the outlets. And if for some reason you can't get the AC power to come on correctly, maybe the whole dock is tripped or there's a power problem locally, turn the refrigerator off to protect the batteries from draining uh, when you leave the boat. So in review, making sure your battery charger is on, making sure the boat's plugged in correctly, and um, having happy batteries is the best thing you can do for having a great day out on the water.